um, with that. Uh, today's um, topic, we'll have Henry um, Cole um, visiting with us and discussing kind of a preventative maintenance and, and for a worry-free hatchery uh, from his 30, 31 years experience managing hatcheries from a number of different incubation types, um, equipment types, as a matter of fact. Um, it kind of helping um, particularly newer hatchery managers maybe, but maybe some experienced ones on how to organize and plan and keep your hatchery operating in a, in a worry-free manner by addressing things before they happen. So um, with that, many of you know Henry, he's been with James Way um, about a year and a half, um, over 30 years experience managing hatcheries and, and doing other things um, hatchery related. So with that, um, we'll turn it over to Henry and uh, let you go at it. And then we'll, I'll see you all when he's finished up for our question and answer section. So Henry. Thanks, Dr. Bramwell, and welcome everyone. Let me uh, go ahead and share my screen and then we'll get started. Hopefully everybody can see this. Well, like, like Dr. Bramwell mentioned, this presentation is gonna be talking about preventative maintenance for a worry-free hatchery. Preventative maintenance for me is, is near and dear to my heart. I've been in the industry a long time, like Dr. Bramwell mentioned. And, you know, I've, I've been in situations where we didn't have a preventative maintenance program and, and in other situations where we did have a, maintenance, a preventative maintenance program. And, you know, having a good preventative maintenance program from a hatchery manager's perspective does give you some peace of mind, does make things a little more worry-free in that hatchery because you know your equipment is operating optimally and is performing the way it should. So let's get started. With today's presentation, we're gonna start off looking at some causes of equipment failure. We're gonna look at types of maintenance programs and basically there's gonna be two types that we'll discuss. We're gonna look at some tools to help you develop a preventative maintenance program. We're going to look at how to set up a hatchery preventative maintenance program. And then we'll get into some practical advice. So maintenance is key to optimizing the incubation environment. And most of you that are running a hatchery understand that. So let's look at some of the um, causes of incubator or hatcher failure. And, and you could put in you know, separators, rooftop units, anything along those lines, but I'm gonna concentrate on our incubators and hatchers for today. So improper cleaning or improper chemicals. A lot of times when we go to hatcheries because there's an issue, we find that they're using pressure washers where pressure washers shouldn't be used. For example, on electronics, on control panels, those are not necessary. They may be waterproof or water resistant, but they're not pressure washer proof. So you can run into issues there. Improper chemicals, I'm meaning chemicals that are caustic, that are corrosive to the components, whether they're inside or outside of your incubator or hatcher. We want to make sure we're using chemicals, one, to get the machines cleaned, but not to the point where we're, we're destroying the machines because the chemicals are so corrosive. Water and electronics, everyone knows this. Everyone in maintenance knows this. Water and electricity don't mix. You get water into your electronic components, you're going to have problems. Abusive equipment. You know, I travel around quite a bit. Philip Perry, um, our other hatchery consultant, travels around quite a bit. And a lot of times we see equipment that has been abused. Abused equipment is going to create or it's going to be more prone to failure. Not utilizing protective covers on our sensors. With the James Way single stage machine, we do have protective, protective covers over our humidity and CO2 sensors. If you don't put those protective covers on there when you're cleaning those machines, you will create some sensor failures and or shorten the life expectancy of those sensors. 
So utilizing protective covers is important, even on your, you know, separators and in um, D stacks. A lot of a lot of manufacturers have, um, you know, photo eyes and, and and sensors. Those should be covered as well during the washdown process. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems. Ignoring warning signs. This this is a biggie of, of sight, sound, smell, performance. You know, do you have water coming out of an incubator or hatcher that's not normal? Do you have do you have an incubator or hatcher that you know just doesn't quite sound right? Do you, does it sound like bearings are are rubbing? Does it sound like the fan blades are are hitting the guards? Do you smell do you smell smoke? Do you smell something burning? Those types of things. We don't want to ignore these warning signs, and it's important to make sure that not only you, the hatchery manager, but the maintenance folks, and more importantly, your hourly staff understand some of these warning signs so you can, you can prevent uh, some of the issues before they really become big issues. Untrained staff, another biggie. Um, a lot of times we see untrained staff getting into the control panels to either start the machines or, or change, you know, temperature or whatever. They're not really sure what they're doing. And then they, they get into an area that they shouldn't be, they make changes, and then you have all kinds of issues with either your profiles or how the incubator or hatcher is operating. So if you do have staff utilizing the equipment, make sure they're trained. Not reading the operations manuals. These operation manuals are, are put together for a reason. They have, um, they have basically all of the steps and parameters on, on how to run the equipment um, effectively and optimally. And so, you know, I highly encourage reading the operations manual. You'll see this later in the presentation as well. Lack of proper spare parts, another big one. Um, we see this all too often. You don't have enough parts. You don't have the right parts on hand when you have an equipment breakdown. Say, for example, a fan, a fan motor fails. You don't have the right fan motor. But, you know, a lot of times maintenance go, well, I'm, this fan motor will work. It's going to move air. Yes, that might be true, but it's not going to move the air properly. And then how often do we go back and swap, swap out that motor that you just put on when the new one comes in. A lot of times that doesn't happen. Or, you know, we get a, we, we don't have the right fan blade and we put a different fan blade on there just to get some air moving. Okay, but again, how often do we go back and, and put the right blade on once it comes in? So again, making sure we have the proper spare parts is critical not replacing worn parts um, in, in a timely fashion. We're waiting until parts actually fail before we uh, address the situation. Untrained maintenance. Nowadays, um, you know, a lot of hatcheries have, you know, hatchery managers, hatchery supervisors that are relatively new to the business or maintenance individuals that are relatively new to the business and they're not um, fully aware of the importance of addressing certain situations with incubators or hatchers. So getting your maintenance staff trained and up to speed is important and, and the best way to do that is when they're hired, have them start reading these manuals. Improper maintenance or lack of maintenance, uh, a reactive maintenance program. And that's going to be the gist of our, our presentation today, talking about reactive and preventative maintenance programs today. Poor electrical connections or loose connections. A lot of times over, over years of use, um, you know, vibrations, you can have some of the electrical connections start coming loose, and that could create some issues for you. So let's look at the two types of uh, hatchery maintenance programs that are typically used out in the industry. First is a reactive maintenance program. And second is a preventative maintenance program or one that is proactive 
which will yield a worry-free hatchery. So let's look at each of these in a little more detail. A reactive maintenance program is one of the most commonly used approaches to maintenance, unfortunately. I see this time and time again uh, during my travels. A reactive maintenance program performs maintenance as a reaction to a breakdown or a problem. Basically, the hatchery manager or the, the hatchery maintenance personnel are running around the hatchery just putting out fires. We wait until the equipment stops working or stops working properly before maintenance begins. It lowers the life expectancy of the equipment. Much as, much as this picture of this house here, if it was properly maintained and well-maintained, it wouldn't look in, in the shape that it does now. And when your equipment is not working properly, at this point, the equipment is, is definitely having a negative effect on your performance, not only hatchability, but your day old quality performance, which is obviously not what we're looking for. So I've got a few pictures here of, of just some examples of, of a reactive maintenance type of situation. In, in, this, in this photo, we've got um, uh, a rooftop unit on a hatchery. They do a, a great job of regularly changing out the filters. But when, you, when I pulled the filter out, uh, look what we saw. We saw the coils that were extremely dirty, packed full of dirt and grime. How efficient is this rooftop unit? Not very. And it's having to work a lot harder to do what it needs to do. Here's a few more photos. This is in a multi-stage hatchery. Uh, for those folks that are unfamiliar with a multi-stage hatchery, the center aisle doors should be closed and they're, they're hanging there, falling apart. We've got airflow coming through here, so we're not going to have the proper pressures that we need within that cabinet, which is going to create us an issue. This middle photo, we've got um, humidity nozzles that are not angled in, in the right position. They're, they're dirty, they're plugged, uh, they're just not working right. So, um, which is creating issues uh, within that cabinet as well. We have an exhaust damper that isn't squared. You can see it's, it's smaller on this end, the opening is smaller on this end versus this end, which is also creating some pressure issues within the cabinet. So, you know, during my travels, I, you know, I talked to a lot of uh, hatchery managers and a lot of um, maintenance uh, personnel, and, and they have some mythical advantages to a reactive maintenance program. So let's look at some of these mythical advantages or so-called advantages to a reactive maintenance program. So myth number one is that a reactive maintenance program is more cost effective since maintenance is only performed when the equipment breaks down or fails. Therefore, no cost is incurred until that time. Well, let's bust that myth. Um, this type of behavior, this reactive maintenance program leads to increased long-term equipment costs from failures that can be severe during operational and non-operational hours. You're going to have unplanned failures, and these unplanned failures may result in significant financial impact to the business, let alone the probable damage to Dale quality and hatch performance. Let's look at a second myth of a reactive maintenance program or an advantage of a reactive maintenance program. And this myth is, well, a reactive maintenance program is not very labor intensive. So since no man hours are utilized to perform preventative maintenance activities. Again, let's bust this thing wide open. 
a preventative a reactive maintenance program leads to increased labor costs over time. If sorry, it leads to increased labor cost if overtime is required due to downtime of the equipment, or if production has stopped and you have staff just standing around waiting for maintenance to fix the equipment. So now let's look at the preventative maintenance side of things. A preventative maintenance program performs regularly scheduled maintenance to prevent equipment breakdown. It provides the flexibility for preventative maintenance schedules and allows you to perform your PM functions when it is most convenient and efficient. So basically you can perform these PM functions or preventative maintenance functions during normal operating hours. This maintains the consistency of machine and the equipment operation. It improves the life expectancy of the equipment and its parts. It optimizes the equipment operation and therefore optimizes its, its performance, which obviously is a good thing with the little guy smiling and his thumb up. So a preventative maintenance program is, is so important and yet so many people just ignore it. And, and I'm not really sure what the answer is or why that is. A lot of times people only react when things don't work. And once things are not working, now you really have a problem. Another reason for the importance of a preventative maintenance program is I alluded to this earlier with the generational change in management, maintenance and general labor. You have a lot of inexperienced management, maintenance and hourly general labor in these hatcheries. We've lost a lot of experience in a lot of our hatcheries. Having a preventative maintenance program now, in my opinion, is much more critical than ever before because of this inexperience that we have within our hatcheries. We have multi-stage incubation equipment in North America that is 40 plus years old on average. Again, with, with that kind of age on the equipment, a preventative maintenance program is critical to maintain you know, the efficiency and optimal performance or as optimal a performance as you can at a 40 year old equipment. And a reactive maintenance, it, the reactive maintenance mentality in a hatchery can only have devastating consequences. So similar picture, different hatchery, looking at a rooftop unit. Again, they're changing the filters on a regular basis but look at the coils. Um, they happen to be actually up there just rinsing off the coils. So um, kudos to them. Uh, you know, again, just an example of what a preventative maintenance program uh, looks like and can do. So again, during my travels, you know, I, I, I again talk to managers, maintenance individuals, and there are some mythical disadvantages to a preventative maintenance program. So let's look at these mythical disadvantages and see if we can um, bust those um, myths. So the first mythical disadvantage is it's cost ineffective. Since maintenance is performing work on a scheduled basis and the equipment is not performing poorly, it's functioning properly. Well, let's bust that. Um, through a preventative maintenance program, you will have fewer unexpected breakdowns. You're gonna have reduced production breakdowns, improved equipment performance, improved day old quality. What about the second myth? It's labor intensive since you got man hours being utilized to perform preventative maintenance equipment on you know, incubators, hatchers, or whatever other equipment, and they appear to be working just fine. Well, again, this is busted. You're gonna have less unexpected breakdowns, which is gonna result in less time spent repairing the equipment. 
and there's just no time for a preventative maintenance program. And, and I like to bust this in a way that, you know, there's always time to work on what's important. So how important is a preventative maintenance program to you? So let's look at some benefits to the preventative maintenance program. We've already um, spoke about several of these, but I just wanted to uh, put these in a, in a more concise fashion for everybody. It improves the efficiency of your machines and your equipment. Equipment and parts will last longer. You're gonna have lower power usage. You're gonna have improved chick or dale quality. You're gonna have fewer unexpected breakdowns. You're gonna have improved labor savings. It is predictable and therefore makes budgeting, uh, um, maintenance budgeting and planning much easier. And then maintenance will have more time available to work on other things instead of running around the hatchery, putting out fires. And more importantly, it provides for the hatchery manager peace of mind that the equipment is working properly. It's maintained and functioning as designed, which gives that hatchery manager the feeling of a worry-free hatchery. So let's look at some tools that can be used to help develop a preventative maintenance program. We'll talk about proper spare parts, talk about, like I mentioned, reading the operations manual, a preventative maintenance program on a spreadsheet, and HatchCom 4 for those of you that have HatchCom 4. So let's look at these in a little more detail. Practical spare part management, management is the foundation for a reliable hatchery operation and is critical to its success. In this picture, I'm not sure if the maintenance personnel know what parts they have or what parts they don't have. As you can see, there's old parts on these shelves next to new parts. And, and that's a huge pet peeve of mine putting old parts back on a shelf when we're not sure it's working properly or not. And, and, and in my opinion, if you've taken an atom machine and it doesn't work, you either get that part fixed or you throw it away and you order a new one. But putting used parts back on the shelf um, is just asking for trouble. So properly storing parts and organizing spare parts in a designated secure space is beneficial when a critical part needs replaced. There's nothing worse than going to the hatchery at midnight, 1 a.m., spending an hour looking for the part that you need to replace, and then you find out it's a used part that came out of another machine, and you're not even sure it's going to work, but you put it on anyway. So, you know, having parts organized that you can go get the part, put it on the machine, is very important. Spare parts lists are available. If you need a spare parts list, please contact, uh, please contact us and, and we can certainly provide that for you, whether you have multi-stage or single stage equipment. Having the right parts on hand, again, is very critical. And then when in doubt, throw it out, as I mentioned earlier. Just a quick reminder, we've, we've talked about this a few times now on, on past webinars about our James Way online parts ordering. If you need parts, you can certainly order them through our uh, website on our online parts ordering um, page. So let's talk a little bit about reading the operations manuals, whether we're dealing with single stage or multi-stage equipment. Or if you got rooftop units or, you know, separators, D stacks, whatever, again, usually they come with operations manuals, definitely want to make sure you're reading them. And the reason being is because 90% of the issues can be solved by reading these operation manuals. Also, within the James Way operation manuals, we have a troubleshooting guide, which is extremely well laid out 
extremely useful, extremely helpful for maintenance folks, but yet too often not utilized. I highly encourage everyone to utilize these troubleshooting guides. Not only will it save you time, it'll save you money. And, and the reason being that, I mean, time is money, but a lot of times maintenance will go and start, you know, they have an issue with a piece of equipment and they'll start changing out parts. And they may change out a half a dozen parts and it may take them all morning to get that piece of equipment up and running again. If you follow the troubleshooting chart, um, and this is just one example here, if you follow the troubleshooting chart, you can probably get it solved in a quarter of the time and change out maybe one or two parts. And by doing that, you know those parts are not working properly. You can either see if you can get them repaired or just throw them away. In the previous example that I mentioned about changing out a half a dozen parts, a lot of times maintenance will put those parts in, in a box, they'll put a question mark on it, stick it on the shelf. So you're not sure if that part was good or bad and it just makes things a little dicey at one o'clock in the morning when you have to change out parts. You're not sure if you're gonna change out a part that's gonna fail on you. Another thing in our operations manuals for multi-stage machines is we have a recommended preventative maintenance schedule. You can also find a recommended preventative maintenance schedule for our single stage machines as well in the, in, in the single stage operations manual. So what we've done, because again, a lot of people don't like to read the manuals, what we've done is we've recently put together an Excel spreadsheet for multi-stage uh, setters, multi-stage hatchers, and again, single-stage setters and single-stage hatchers, that this Excel spreadsheet will be shared with everybody that um, has signed up for this webinar. And it basically puts together a preventative maintenance program for you for the James Way incubators and hatchers. I just have an example of a multi-stage setter here. And what we would do is we would uh, write the number of the setter uh, that we're working on. And in this particular section here, um, you're gonna have your maintenance personnel uh, check these items before or after each set. They will then date it and put their initials. Again, this is only an example. We have daily checks, weekly checks, monthly checks, quarterly checks, every six month checks, yearly checks. It's all laid out for you um, in an Excel spreadsheet. So like I said, everyone will receive this. You can then utilize this same format to then incorporate your rooftop units, your you know, D stacks, your separators, those types of equipment as well. And you can have a, a pretty nice um, set of um, preventative maintenance program uh, fairly easily. Along with this, uh, we put together a setter and hatcher preventative maintenance log. This is, this is pretty critical to, to a preventative maintenance program. And the reason it's critical is you're going to start tracking and keeping track of any repairs made to the equipment. Anytime um, parts are being replaced, you can have a log on that particular incubator or hatcher. So, you know, you would put incubator, say, 10 up here, and then you'd start um, running a log anytime something has been repaired, something has been replaced, you can log on this sheet. So over time, you can start seeing how long, you know, fan motors will last, how long, you know, different solenoids will last before they need to be replaced. Also, you can see if you've got a, a, an issue with a machine where it's going through a, a particular part much quicker, much sooner than the other machines. 
So it's it's quite a a handy tool, and it 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 blends well um, with a with this preventative maintenance program. And here's just an example for single stage setters. I'm not going to go through these again. They're set up exactly the same way, except for you've got different things that you're looking for between a multi-stage and single stage equipment. Again, the preventative maintenance log is, is vital to, uh, to this program. So let's look at, at HatchCom 4 and how HatchCom 4 can help you um, put together a preventative maintenance program as well. So HatchCom 4 is a complete hatchery monitoring software system. It contains the tools you need to make the decisions to effectively, uh, to effectively increase your productivity. And it also includes a scheduled maintenance system that is truly underutilized, in my opinion, um, with this equipment. So, with, with HatchCom 4, there's a lot of things you can see. The, the different colors show that the machines are running normally, if they're alarming, if they're running a profile, if they're in pre-warm, if they're shutting down, if they're offline, if they're not communicating. It, it provides a lot of information at a glance. When you look at HatchCom 4, this is the main screen. Again, we've got the colors that I've mentioned earlier. It will, if you have our guardian system, which monitors your, um, your room and plenum pressures, it will also populate on HatchCom, on HatchCom 4. So you can monitor and control your rooms and your plenum pressures. So, what we want to do is we want to talk about the maintenance section. So if you click on the maintenance icon up here, we'll get into the scheduled maintenance system. So the scheduled maintenance system or maintenance report allows you to set periodic maintenance tasks for your incubators, hatchers, your HVAC units, and you could use um, you could use it to set up separators, D stack, whatever else, whatever other equipment you want to within your hatchery. The tasks can be general types, which would be over here, that are independent of your incubators and hatchers, or they can be tied to incubators, single stage incubators, single stage hatcher, again multi stage incubator, multi stage hatcher. And they can also take care of the guardian um, room controls and plenum controls. So the task can be tied to your platinum um, incubators or platinum machines. And they can be pulled up on the machine's touch screen, as you can see over here, uh, to view any unfished unfinished tasks or to complete a task. If you have a platinum machine with software that supports the scheduled maintenance feature, you need at least a software program of 4.0, 4.20 or greater to be able to utilize this feature. You'll be able to examine the machine's unfinished maintenance tasks and be able to complete them right at the machine. Here on this slide here, you can see that um, tasks that are due in the next week will be highlighted in yellow and tasks that are overdue would be highlighted in red. So it, it'll take a little bit to, to set this, um, this feature up but once you do, uh, it'll be a great tool uh, for managers and maintenance individuals to effectively run a preventative maintenance program. HatchCom 4 
also has an alarm call out feature that automatically will place a telephone call or an email to a list of contacts when an alarm occurs. If you're going to use the, uh, the telephone calling feature, you would need a modem that is configured and hooked up to the computer. If you're not going to use the telephone call feature and just want to use the email feature, you do not need an additional modem to be hooked up to your computer. So you can specify which alarms um, will trigger Hatchcom to initiate a call or an email. You can specify the time period during the day when Hatchcom will either call or send out an email. You can also specify a, a, a time delay before Hatchcom, Hatchcom calls for emails or when it calls again if the problem persists. So again, um, this feature, in my opinion, is, is much underutilized in a lot of hatcheries. And um, we'd be more than happy to, to sit down and, and help folks over the phone or whatever, um, try to set you up if, if you need help with that. Otherwise, if you read your Hatchcom manual, it explains that pretty well in there too. So I'd try that route first. If that doesn't work, certainly give us a call. So no time for a preventative maintenance program. On my travels, I, you know, many hatchery managers tell me they would love to have a preventative maintenance program, but they just don't have the time. They can't find the time because maintenance, all they're doing is running around putting out fires. Well, my response is if you don't find the time, nothing will change and you'll never get to a preventative maintenance program it's important just to find the time and to just get started. So how do we go from a reactive to a preventative maintenance program? Well, first, you and your maintenance staff need to make sure that you are 100% committed in making this change. If you're not, you're just wasting your time. Second, you need to begin a preventative maintenance program in my opinion, on the equipment that's giving you the most problems and is taking up most of your maintenance folks time. So start on that one or two pieces of equipment that's giving you the most headaches and then set up a program, a preventative maintenance program on those equipment. Use the owner's manual and develop a preventative maintenance program. Once you've done that on those, on those one or two critical item or critical pieces of equipment that's giving you a lot of time, a lot of headaches, or taking up a lot of time, giving you a lot of headaches, then you can work on the next piece of equipment that's taking up the most time. You do that um, uh, time and time again. You want to document what has been PM'd and by whom. Again, you would use that uh, preventative maintenance spreadsheet or log or Hatchcom 4. Again, this, this process may take a little while to accomplish, but once completed, you would have a great preventative maintenance program. So again, you wanna start on, your, on the equipment that's giving you the most problems, get them into a preventative maintenance program then work on the next piece of equipment that's giving you the most problems, so on and so forth. So how do we set up a preventative maintenance program? We want to inventory all equipment within our facility that will be part of this preventative maintenance program. We want to develop a pre preventative maintenance program, again, from the manufacturer's recommendation. They know best, so I would utilize the manufacturer's recommendation develop the PM procedures. We're gonna do a PM schedule, much like the spreadsheet that you all will be receiving for each piece of equipment, develop a, a tracking system, much like the preventative maintenance log that you will all be receiving. We certainly wanna train our maintenance personnel in this PM um, program. We wanna put it to work. And then finally, 
uh, periodically review the progress and make any adjustments as needed. So let's look at some practical advice. For those hatcheries that like electronic logs, HatchCom 4 maintenance schedule can certainly help set up, monitor, and log, uh, log scheduled PMs on, your, on all of your equipment in the hatchery. For hatcheries that like paper logs, we have a PM program on an Excel spreadsheet to help you develop your program. This will be sent along with today's presentation, as I mentioned earlier, for all those who have signed up. When we put together a preventative maintenance program, there are some key areas we, we certainly need to focus on. And obviously, we want to focus on our incubators and hatcheries, our HVAC equipment, the physical structure and components of the hatchery, your controls, room controls, um, plenum controls, calibrations, pro and processing equipment, or anything else that you think might be critical to your success. So what about taking this preventative maintenance program to the next level? What is the next level? On the preventative maintenance log that we, that we saw here just a little bit ago, for each piece of equipment, you want to log each time parts are replaced or PM is performed just like this um, form that we, that we saw earlier. Wanna, I also suggest placing a date on each part that's being replaced so that you actually have a date on that part. So you can kind of see how long it's lasting before it needs replaced. You will then be able to predict how long parts will last before needing to be replaced. This will allow you to improve your maintenance budgeting and ultimately provide you or get you into a predictive maintenance program, which would be the next step beyond a preventative maintenance program. So top performing hatcheries, whether old or new, all have good preventative maintenance programs. You cannot have a top performing hatchery with equipment that is not well maintained. You can have your best profiles, you can have, you know, best fertility, but you're not going to be a top performing hatchery if the equipment's not well maintained. And then preventative maintenance provides peace of mind that the equipment is properly maintained and functioning as designed, which equates to the worry-free hatchery. So any hatchery, regardless of its size, age or location, is only as good as its routine and preventative maintenance programs. 